So my name is Radwan Sroka and I'm working here uh, in Red Hat in Brno as a software engineer. And I would like to talk about uh, application while listing a little bit. So, <laughs> so uh, what is an application while listing? Well, it is a secu this is a security practice where uh, where application or program is allowed to run according to its presence in the list, which. Uh, and usually, usually an administrator, an administrator is uh, responsible for maintaining such a list. What application uh, will be there or it won't be. So uh, why is that so important? Mm, well, there are at least two reasons. Because it adds another level of security to the system and it is application while listing uh, capability is part of uh, many uh, certification schemes, for example, common criteria and others. And this uh, actually pushes the software vendors to implement some sort of application while listing solution. So where is the Red Hat? Well, we introduced FA policy framework in RHEL 8.1 and Fedora. <clears throat> I guess 29. Uh, what is a, a FA policy framework? Well, it's a, it's a simple and lightweight solution from Red Hat, and it uh, benefits from RPM and DNF integration, and it has also all this support, and it is built upon FA Notify API. <coughs> FA Notify API is kernel API, which is similar to iNotify, knows I notify this uh, API can uh, watch file system events based on system calls like open and close and read write but uh, FA notify can uh, watch also exec uh, system call and it is blockable, blockable on uh, system call side that means um, system call system call is uh, being on hold while the watcher doing a response we can see the, <coughs> the diagram here. So we have uh, two processes here. The, the one on the left is bash, is, which is being watched by FA policy daemon, which is watcher. And bash would like to execute P, standard PS Linux command. So uh, if if bash calls exec ve, it will uh, this system call will be on hold, and kernel will not will send the fa notify events to the to the watcher about uh, uh, about what's, hap what's happening. So fa policy daemon can read from the event that bash wants to execute ps command with such an id, uh, such a pid, and uh, fa policy daemon has to decide what to do with it. And uh, it, uh, <clears throat> there are two possible uh, resolutions. Uh, this will be allowed or denied. If this is going to be allowed, exec v will continue, and uh, <clears throat> it will eventually uh, end with the success. And, but if this is a denied, and FA policy daemon will send the denied, then exec v will fail, and uh, ps command won't be executed. So FA policy framework can be divided into few, into few parts, but the most sig significant one is uh, daemon. When uh, daemon starts, it uh, loads all backends and all data from them, and it stores them into its internal database. And uh, then, it's, then it is waiting for uh, FA notify events, and where such an event uh, occurs on the system, there it will, uh, <clears throat> it will look up for the rule that matches, and eventually will check uh, if uh, this uh, content of that event is uh, trusted or not. That, uh, can uh, construct the query against the database, and if it success, it will it, it can it can tell that is it is trusted. So, 
Yeah. FA policy D can be configured in three ways. Uh, the first one is a rules file, which uh, holds, uh, usually ho it holds a um, default set of rules. Uh, the second way is a configuration file for daemon. There we can uh, tweak some performance options. And uh, <coughs> the last way is to edit a trust file, where we can specify the list of applications which we trust. So as I said before, there are optional backends here. Uh, by default, uh, there are two of them, RPMD, RPMDB and FAPOECD Trust. RPMDB backends just load all files from the RPM database and it uh, makes them trusted. And uh, FAPOECD Trust is some another uh, uh, way how to specify this application by administrator, for example. So when we have these files in database, we can say they are trusted, and if they are trusted by default, by uh, with default rule set, they will be allowed to run. So FAPOECD has implemented a uh, rule language which uh, has uh, subject-object notation as SEO Linux or Audit. And it can be divided into four parts. The first decision can be allow or deny, and it uh, can be also audited. <coughs> decision means that uh, what, uh, what action will be uh, taken if a uh, rule matches. So, and it can also send an audit message to audit demon. Permission is based on FA Notify API, which can be open and or execute. Uh, that comes from what uh, Cisco was called. And there is also uh, any keyword which can match both of them. Uh, the another part is subject. Subject is process, which <coughs> is going to call the system call, an object is uh, what is going to be executed or opened. And uh, uh, that's all about FAPOECD. We can install it. Sim installation is simple as that. It is um, in uh, default repositories in RHEL and Fedora. So if we install it, uh, what can we do about it? So we would like to enable some custom software in home directory. Let's say I'm a regular user and I'd like to run my script or something. So let's say I have two files in my uh, home directory, which is uh, one, one is bi binary and the second one is Python script. I cre I've created the uh, binary from its copy of ls command, but it's in my home. So if I, if I run it, uh, it will print me what is on this in this directory. So I need to run FAPOECD daemon in debug in the uh, background and save the save the command output. Then I then I <coughs> after that uh, if I try uh, this binary it is not possible to run it as we can see. So uh, what can we do about it? Uh, we can investigate the output of the FAPLC daemon. If we start looking for my bin, we can grab that there is a there is a line that says that there was an event about that, and it was denied. And we can see that uh, there, there are some metadata, and it was denied by the rule, uh, rule number nine, which is some default rule that denies everything probably. <coughs> so we can see that uh, it was, we, the event has uh, or had execute permission and the subject is my shell, which is going to execute my bin with uh, this file type as an, execu as an execu executable. So we need to create a rule that will allow such an event. 
So let's say we allow execution, uh, allow event that has execute permission, and uh, we can specify there uh, my bash, uh, my shell, or we can put there all, and it will work with uh, any shell, let's say. But the uh, important thing here is that it has to be trusted. And trusted means that it comes from RPM database. It is in, in proper, properly installed on the system. And uh, it is not some 30-way uh, script or something. So let's specify their uh, object, which is my bin. And uh, it ha with this file type. And we know that it is, this file is definitely, definitely not trusted, but it's optional to put there. If we do that, we can see that now we are able to run this binary in home directory. So there's a success right now. <laughs> Let's uh, try to run Python script. This is some Hello World uh, example. So. Again, if we run FAPOE CD in the debug mode in the background, then we are not able to run this application. So let's again investigate the output. And after grabbing for my app, we can see there is an event really similar to that before, but it differs in a file type and in a file, which, uh, which is actually object. So, so the subject is, is totally the same. We need to change only, only the object. If we uh, construct the rule with, with the same approach as before, we can get something like that. So we just change the file as object, and it's, uh, and it's uh, file type. Again, we, we will keep there all. But after that, it's still, it's still not working. <clears throat> so we can run it again. And you can see that we can, now we can grab two events. So there is a one new subsequent event that, uh, uh, that, uh, that is new there. And uh, we can see that there are, there are um, differs only in permission. So we can change the rule which we had before to any. It's the same rule for Python script, but we have any permission. And if we run it again with this rule, it, not, it starts to work. But there are two ways how to run a uh, Python script, right? We tried to the left one, but there is also the right one. Um, I would like to point out difference. If we grab for, for the event in the FAPOST log, we can, grab, we can see that if we run uh, this script with uh, Python interpreter specified, that uh, subject will change. But uh, if we put there all keywords before as a subject, it will still work, but it differs, and it, uh, it's good to know. Another way how to enable uh, running application in uh, home is to enable whole directory with uh, the option in uh, object. But that's not very wise because uh, you can run almost everything in, uh, in home directory, right? And the last option is that uh, you can mark this, uh, you can mark these uh, files as trusted and put there in uh, FAPOCD trust file, and the, if they are trusted, they can be uh, run or executed, okay. That's broken, <laughs> okay. 
So if we are okay with our uh, configuration and everything wor works, we can just uh, enable FA policy D daemon with systemd and we can benefit from it. Okay, thank you. Is it Yeah, because each. Can you repeat the question, please? Why is that? Uh, uh, what is uh, benefit? Does it uh, have any benefit for uh, with, uh, comparing to competition, competition with antivirus companies or something? So uh, uh, difference is this. Difference is that uh, each antivirus. Uh, checks uh, binaries for some patterns, and then it decides if it will be allowed or something, or move to, um, I don't know, some quarantine. But we have this simple idea behind that, that what is installed from uh, uh, official repository is allowed, okay? We trust it, and uh, we trust also RPM database, that it can verify the files on the disk, and so we are okay. That's that's our line that we won't cross. Oh, I only thought that. I was just saying, um, in terms of the protection suite offered at the moment, it's only limited to exec and open sys calls. And is that just no. because it's not yet been um, extended to support that, or there may be performance impacts in doing that in the kernel, for example? So mm -hmm. I just wondered why it was so so constrained. It might just be that it's a young project. Yeah, it's it's a young project. Also, this API is very limited, but uh, we are uh, using uh, this exec calls. This is the most important feature of that API. Okay. So, any question? Preferably easy one. <laughs> Yeah. But not everything deploys RPM. So is there other plans for like, for other distributions? Yeah. Uh, but not, not just like things, but yeah, yeah. RPM OS So we have uh, we have uh, some kind of API which is uh, which we can expand. We can implement whatever whichever source we choose. It it can be really whatever. We can we can set in a daemon configuration which backend we use. We can use also like multiple backends at the same time, and uh, then it then in a rule language everything is but trusted or not. So that's the or oh, that's how it works. Yeah. Over with SE Linux on this because I appreciate a lot of the labeling architecture of SE Linux allows you to do some of this. Yeah, we, uh, I, I had that question a lot. <laughs> uh, the basic idea behind that is like uh, okay, you can, you can uh, deny something through the SE Linux, but uh, this is uh, more like dynamic solution. You can change it a lot. You can, it's user friendly. It's uh, very hard to maintain something like that in Sonyx. <laughs> well, SE Linux is mandatory access control. Yeah. But once you've allowed something to, to be executed, yes. we'll make sure that that was actually something that was valid and you trust the yeah. That's where FA Policy D or INA that you heard about in the last talk. Okay. 
So I guess if there are, oh yeah. Can you repeat it again? The overhead, over, what is the overhead? Overhead of the implementation. Overhead? Uh, like uh, some per performance impact or something like that? Yeah, of course, there is some performance hit, but uh, we worked on it. And it, uh, we, reduce, we reduced it a lot in last year, let's say. I'm not sure, I, I won't be telling any numbers, but uh, there is some. But it's definitely better than IMA. Like, it's another level. That's why I said that it's uh, lightweight, lightweight and simple. It's uh, really fast in comparison to IMA. Okay, I guess we are over. There are no questions. <laughs>